Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the latest how-to webinar. Um, I'm delighted that the Jags joined us today, and we're, we're going to be talking about connecting the LinkedIn audience uh, and your website. Now, I'll, I'll I'll get Jag to introduce himself in a minute, but um, firstly, with, with this, as always, you know, your interaction is really is welcome on this. So you'll see at the bottom of your screen, you've got options for Q and A or, or chat box. If you've got any questions or any comments. You know, please do do put them in there, and um, um, I'm sure Jag will be happy to answer them during or after the the session, um, and we'll we'll go through them as we get through it. Um, so I'd love to hear your questions. Like I said, I know there's a number of people watching this live now, which is great, but also there'll be a number of people who are watching this um, on playback on YouTube or on our website, wherever it might be. So if you do have any questions that arise when you're watching it, I'm sure again, you know, Jag will be happy to answer them and and, and speak to you all. Um, on that as well so yeah i'll, I'll kind of hand you over to, to the person you've actually wanted to listen to not not me so uh thank you jag i'll, I'll hand it over to you and you, you can introduce yourself in the session great stuff thank you michael okay so i'm going to screen share uh and we'll just get rolling from there so uh let me just go into oops full screen you see that yeah, can you see yeah, that, man? Yeah, 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 it's come on. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so um, yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about how to create a connection between your LinkedIn audience and your website. Uh, so before I talk a little bit about myself and uh, and expand and what we do, um, I've, we've done a bit of research, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of information around that. So did you know that studies show that humans have an attention span? of eight seconds. That's one second less than a goldfish. Now, up until about a year ago, I didn't actually know this. This, this kind of, I thought it was kind of common knowledge to say, you know, I've got the memory of a goldfish, but it turns out we actually have, as humans, have a, a lesser attention span. Uh, there was, I think there were studies done about maybe about eight years ago um, that um, showed that we actually had an average uh, attention span um, up until maybe, I think it was eight, 10 years ago, something like that, it was about 12 seconds. But when the study was done again, it showed it was eight seconds. And that's representative of the amount of information that we're all constantly pounded with. And I think digital has a, a big part to play in that. If you think about, you know, you, if you're at work at a desk job, you're always on your uh, laptop, uh, you've got your phone in your hand, there's always all kinds of things going on, always craving for your attention. So as humans generally, we have a lot less, uh, we have a much lower attention span. And that's probably going to get uh, decrease even more as time goes on. So that's, that's just one, one fact to keep in mind. Um, another thing was a little bit of research that I did. Um, it was at some point during lockdown, I think it was around uh, maybe August time last year. And I asked the question on LinkedIn, I did a LinkedIn poll, how many times do you visit a, web, a business to business website before you make an inquiry? And you can see the results there. So we had 62 votes. So it's not a huge uh, uh, amount of people that have answered, but it was indicative of what I actually anticipated the results to be. So. The question with that is, you know, what does that actually mean? What does it mean? What it means is in terms of when you think about it in terms of a website, you need to convert 24% of people into inquirers on their first website visit. So of, of this, uh, of this poll, obviously, you know, uh, people say they'll go on once and they'll make an inquiry. So that's almost a quarter of the people that come to your website, you need to be doing the best possible job to get them to pick up the phone. It also means there's a risk of losing the other 76% competition in between website visits. If you're not telling them what they want to hear or the website isn't right, then you know, you've got that opportunity to lose them. Um, so our answer to that, this got me thinking, my answer to that was what I'm going to be talking about today, which is what I call the LinkedIn landing page. Now, what I'm going to go through today isn't rocket science. It was just an idea that I had, and it's a slight adjustment on the way of doing things. It's more of a process. And it's something that can be relatively easily put in place. You know, if you have your own website, if it's like a Wix website or a Squarespace website, it's the kind of stuff you'll be able to relatively easy, easily. If you don't have um, any, any, if you don't have, a, you know, if, it, if it's not stuff you're doing yourself, if it's stuff that you're, uh, you need a web developer to do, even then it isn't rocket science. It's not a big thing to achieve. Um, so with this hack, I generally don't like the word hack, but it's kind of um, a, a way to describe it. What we achieved um, in the space of six months, uh, we, we, we did all this on our own website to start with, and we started rolling it out with some of our clients. So between May 2020 to October 2020, we saw a 54% decrease in bounce rate off the back of implementing what I'm about to show you. 
we saw a 210% increase in pages viewed per session. And that was from 1.44 to 4.47. So obviously, you know, how do you view 1.44 pages? How do you view, um, you know, half a page? It, obviously, this is from Google Analytics. It gives you kind of an overall average measurement. So we saw quite an increase um, in terms of the number of pages viewed. And then finally, we saw a 1,142% increase in average session time. And that means, obviously, well, it does what it says on the tin, how, how many uh, people, are, the amount of time people are spending on the website. And really, that's one of the factors. That's what it's all about. You need to monopolize as much time as possible um, of a person and keep them interested and keep them flowing through the website just so that they'll get more information. And then ultimately, it leads to that inquiry. Right, so that's the kind of stuff I'm going to be talking about. I'll give you a little bit of information about Expand before I go any further. So um, our studio is based in Saltaire in West Yorkshire. We're a full service digital agency and we've been going for 14 years. I set the business up in 2007. My background is in marketing strategy. Some of the more recognisable names, the big names that we worked with are Lint Chocolate, Agra Restaurant, Tetley Brewery and Her Majesty's Prison Service. Um, and for anybody that I, want, I always get asked this question, no, we didn't get free chocolate, no, we didn't get free curry, no, we didn't get free beer, and no, we weren't recruiting prisoners, it was an internal branding project that we had to do. Um, so, so this is kind of more, um, kind of, like I say, the more recognisable names, but the majority of our client base is very much in the business to business sector, construction and manufacturing, and business services as well, and it's all about the results. So I'll just quickly go through a few results that we've achieved, and I'll just get straight into what we're talking about today. So. Headway Recruitment, we rebranded these guys a few years ago. We built their website. We got them a 35% increase in traffic after 12 months, uh, which led to 114,000 uh, pounds converted business via search engine optimization. Pitts Wilson are electrical contractors. We got them 200,000 pounds of inquiries in the space of six weeks through Google AdWords. Chris Makin is a forensic accountant. Uh, we've just recently rebranded for him and we got him 80,000 pounds of new business via SEO from his website. And Energy Mill Gym, our local gym, uh, we got them 500 members within three weeks and the target was four weeks. So they were really happy with that. This is when they launched a few years ago. So that's a bit of an, out an outline of generally the outcome that we work to. So the process that we generally use, we've create, created a process called Solar 7, and this kind of connects in what I'm going to be talking about today. So I'll talk, let me just talk through the overall process. I'll paint the bigger picture and I'll hone in on, on the specific thing I'm going to be talking about. So the seven stages to achieve your objective, which is a private business, it's often return on investment. So stage one is discovery. It's all about understanding your business, where it's been, where it is now, where it wants to go, understanding the audience, understanding the objectives, understanding the competition, understanding your values, all that information. Stage two is about creating the strat strategy and that captures all activity that needs to take place. And the outcome from the strategy uh, is often, well, not often, it always is, uh, what we call a roadmap. So it will say, right, in um, May you need to do this, in uh, June you need to do that, in July you need to do this, and that all uh, references back to the overall strategy document. At the heart of the model is stage three, which is your brand and your content, the overall message. That's the overall foundation for any marketing that you're going to be doing. Uh, and then stage four is your website. And we call that a bit like your sun in your solar marketing system. Um, stage five is our, what we call the planets or the channels that drive traffic to your site. So that might be getting to the top of Google via search engine optimization, pay per click, social media, email marketing, advertising or PR. It's obviously not just limited to these. This is just a generic model, but there's all kinds of other ways that you can kind of build traffic and get it to your site. And the idea is that you get traffic to your website and then that obviously entices people to then, you know, make an inquiry, pick up the phone, click on the buy button, uh, fill in the contact form or whatever it, it might be. And in a perfect world, you know, if you've got numerous, um, you're, you're present in numerous channels, the more that you can get yourself in front of your target audience, the more likely they are to remember you and the more likely they are to purchase from you. Um, on average in a day, you see between 3,000 to 25,000 marketing messages a day. So if you all just think about the room that you're in now, you know, whatever your laptop is, whether it's a Dell or an Apple or whatever, uh, there's branding, we're being pounded by branding left, right and center, just walking down the road, there's car brands there, there's shop signage, there's billboards. If you think about your phone, how many messages you're getting, and it, you know, that justifies what I was telling you about, you know, we've got an attention span of eight seconds and that's reducing because we've been pounded with so much information. 
So that's why you need to have a multi-channel approach. And the orange ring around each one of these, uh, it says content in there. So uh, content is obviously at the heart of the model, but it's key to each of the channels as well. So for example, you could be posting all day every day on social media, but if you're not really saying anything of any value, if the content isn't good, it means absolutely nothing. So that's stage five, the planet. Stage six is reviewing me and measuring your activity and fine tuning in and tweaking it. And that's ultimately what will get you to return on investment. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about your website and your social media, specifically your personal profile on LinkedIn and how we can actually make them work closer together. Before I go into it, I wanna talk a little bit about the sales funnel. So the sales funnel is a, this is a generic sales funnel and it's a process that we all go through no matter what, whether we're buying a packet of gum or whether we're buying a house and everything in between. So I'll talk through it. Um, so the first stage in any kind of buying process is awareness. So I'll use, um, I've recently purchased a phone. I've dropped my phone and I brought the screen. And I thought, okay, it's time to buy a new phone. So I have an Apple. At that stage, I was aware, right? I need a new phone. I was aware that, okay, I'm going to go to EE and have a look what's on their website and see what the new phones are and what the deals are. So I went into the consideration phase on the EE website and had a little look um, and uh, had a look around and saw what were there and what the bells and whistles are and what the camera's like on the new iPhone and all that kind of stuff. I then called up EE and I had a chat with them um, and they um, gave me what, you know, let me know what offers were on for how, however much data and whatnot. Um, I had a little think about it and then I made the purchase. Um, and then um, once I've, I made the purchase, you go to the purchase stage. After that is when you end up in retention. So no doubt in two years time, I'm going to call up EE and say, right, okay, my contract's ended. Um, what have you got on offer? Um, and they'll say to me, we can do X, Y, Z. And I'll say, um, well, actually, um, I might have a shop around. And usually at that point, they generally say, oh, actually, Mr. Panasar, we can give you another five pound off what we've just said. They're doing what they can to retain me. And they have done so for the last 15 or so years. So that's kind of the, how the sales funnel works um, with mobile phones as an example. What we're gonna be focusing on today is it's all about the awareness and the consideration stage for your target audience. So if you remember, we decreased our bounce rate by 54%. So I, I, the other two things I mentioned, uh, session time and pages per visit are pretty self-explanatory. So I want to explain a little bit more um, about, I want to explain a little bit more what a bounce rate is. So it's basically when someone visits your website and leaves without clicking on any other pages or completing a desired action, like completing a form. So they go to your page, they have a look around and they leave. That's classed as a bounce. So the lower your bounce rate, the better. You want people to go to your website, click on something, go to another page, click on something else, and ultimately do what you want them to do, which whatever that call to action is, is pick up a phone or make an inquiry. What causes a high bounce rate? Um, so here's a few examples. So user experience begins with your content. Is it readable? So, you know, is it broken out? Have you got nice kind of headers and subheaders in there? Is it digestible information? Is there too much text? You know, if you've got this massive wall of text, it just makes it, I don't know about you guys, but you know, um, I kind of like to skim read and then I become a very detailed reader when I'm getting closer and closer to making a purchase. Um, there's, there's three broad types of content consumers and you, you, and, and you can classify them as skimmers, swimmers and divers. Um, and it's pretty self-explanatory. I'd probably describe myself as more of a skimmer stroke swimmer, but then as I get uh, more, much closer in, in the funnel to the purchase criteria, uh, to the purchase process, uh, part, to, to purchasing, that's when I become more of a diver and get into the detail. Um, too many pop-ups can also cause a high bounce rate. You know, they can be distracting or off-putting. I'm not a big fan of pop-ups. I feel like it has to really add value for, for it to be something that I will engage with. Um, or no call to action, um, you know, if it's not clear what you want people to do, if there isn't a clear button of where you want people to go or what you want them to do next, that can cause people to just leave. It's so easy to click on the back button these days because we're just all, you know, we've got an eight, eight second attention span. Um, old content, you know, if you go to a website and the, the, the information is outdated, you know, you, that's, that's a dead cert way of getting someone to click away from it. So the information needs to be up to date. Uh, and marketing in the wrong place, if you're reaching out to the wrong audience, 
um, and someone's going to, the, to your website and it's not for them, they're gonna, they're gonna leave. Um, so it's getting it in front of the right audience. And then another factor is slow page speed. If the website loads slowly, uh, that again, you know, eight second attention span, think about how impatient you are. If something isn't loading very quickly, you're out of there. So that's the kind of stuff that causes a high bounce rate. So I'm going to move on to personal branding. So we're talking about your own personal LinkedIn profile here and how it connects with the website. So um, I'm sure we all know Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. Um, and he said, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So in this circumstance, obviously, you know, you've got your personal brand and your business brand and, you know, especially in the SME sector, they are very, very, very closely connected. Um, so really, you know, what you want people to be doing is remembering you, especially in a, in a LinkedIn environment, you know, it's all about people remembering you, but also creating that connection with your business brand as well and being able to have that handover. So how do you connect your personal brand to your business brand? Well, my answer is a LinkedIn landing page. So how does this work? So here's a screenshot of my, uh, my uh, LinkedIn profile. Um, so on LinkedIn, now LinkedIn in itself, obviously as a website, they just want you to stay on LinkedIn. They don't make it easy for you to leave, they, they hide away uh, you know, your website profile. Um, so um, what I've highlighted in, in red there, what I've um, circled there is the contact info. So if I want to go, to, if you want to come to my um, LinkedIn profile uh, and you want to learn more about me, you'll obviously have a read through it. But if you're interested in having a look at my website, you have to go to contact info. That will then bring up a pop-up box um, and it will, um, you'll then click on the website link, which is there. Now, Normally what you would do here, ignore what you, you see for the rest of that, it would just be www.expandmarketing.co.uk. And what that would do is take you to our homepage. Now, by doing that, you have, um, you have connected with me. You've probably seen some of my content. You're interested in learning more about me. With, and, and at that stage, uh, you uh, have clicked on our homepage. Now, what's happened there is what I'm calling the traditional LinkedIn website link. You've gone from LinkedIn, you've clicked on uh, the link that I've just shown you, you've gone to the website homepage, and then what you're seeing is a few, let's say these are just a few examples of the navigation. You can learn about our services, you can learn about the business, or you can learn about case studies. From uh, the about page is where the people are. So that's where my personal profile, my personal team page is on, on, on our website. So what you've got is you go to the website homepage and there's a disconnect between the people. So you've actually disconnected now. You know, we're, we're uh, uh, with the six of us within our organization. Imagine a business where there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people. The disconnect is huge. You've gone from someone's personal brand to the business brand. It's the connection between the personal brand and the business brand that really kind of helps warm that relationship up and, and just pushes you that much closer in the sales funnel towards the consideration phase. The way the LinkedIn landing page works is we take you to a dedicated page for the person. So in this case, it would be me. And on that page, um, there are calls to action that talk about specific things that I specialize in. So in this case, it's discovery and strategy and it'll show case studies. And then what it will do is it will take you to, um, say, from discovery, let's say, it'll show you, it'll take you to the case study page. And then from there, it'll show you the call to action. So what I'll do is I'm going to show you um, our website and I'll show you it as a, as, a, as a live example. So this is our home page. So this is where traditionally where we would have taken people uh, via uh, LinkedIn. Where I'm actually taking them is um, now is to my team page, to my what I'm calling my LinkedIn landing page. And on here, so imagine you've gone from LinkedIn on here, you've come to this page. So immediately there's the same picture of me and you've got that connection. You see, you can see it's branded up, it's the Expand website and it's talking specifically about what I believe in relation to the things that I specialize in. My values associated with my area of expertise. Um, I specialize in strategy and discovery. So obviously I talked about Solar 7, we've got seven stages. 
my other team members have different um, different buttons here that they specialize in. So Danny, who specializes in social media, she's got social media on there. Results that I've delivered, so the case studies, so examples of clients that I've worked with and the results that I've delivered. Um, a testimonial from a client I've worked directly with talking about me. Um, and then uh, content that I've created, any blogs that I've created. And as it goes, here's how to make most of your website traffic from LinkedIn. So this is a blog that I wrote a few months ago. Um, and then there's a, a link to our lead magnet if people want to download something for a free uh, marketing strategy template. So this page, in some ways, it's almost a mirror of um, LinkedIn. So if you think about your own LinkedIn profile, you know, you can put your projects on there, you've got testimonial recommendations on there and all that kind of stuff. What we're doing is we're kind of taking the bones of that and putting it into your website. And the idea is that, you know, at that stage, you're going to think, all right, well, I've, I've learned a bit about Jag. All right, Jag specializes in strategy. Let's, let's have a look at the strategy page. So it takes you to the services strategy page and it talks about what we do in terms of our services and strategy and how it works. And peppered throughout there are examples of uh, results that we've achieved. Something that, again, a client has said about us, um, headway recruitment. Um, and then there's a lovely picture of me at the bottom. <laughs> um, so let's say, so, you, so you're on that page. And again, the call to action is, okay, well, put 114,000 pounds of converted sales in 12 months. Let's learn about more, more about um, headway recruitment and what Expand have done for them. So a little bit of information about the challenge, a few visuals, a little bit of information about the solution that we offered. And um, then off the back of that, the call to action is get a quote. So you click on get a quote and then we ask people to fill in the form. So when I take that back to uh, the previous slide, so I've just described, someone goes to the LinkedIn landing page, they go to uh, one of the services, they have a look at a case study and they go to the call, call to action. So rather than going to the home page, they have gone to a dedicated page and I've taken them through a journey on the website that's warmed them into stuff associated with me rather than just a wider company. So yeah, that's just a screenshot of the LinkedIn landing page. So. Like I say, you know, there's nothing, there's no rocket science to this. You know, a lot of websites have individual team pages. Um, and on there, you know, it might be talking about, you know, John is a specialist in accountancy and he has this many years experience and he has these qualifications. So while that page is already there, you know, you can actually just be putting this kind of a structure in place that actually takes people to different parts of the website. Um, so a few tips in creating a LinkedIn landing page. So I've just highlighted to you, um, what, um, how it looks for us, you know, how it looks for uh, Expand. And obviously every website is a little bit different. Every business is a little bit different, uh, but they're the key pages that we want people to go through. Um, so the key thing you need to do is think about where you want people to go um, from your LinkedIn landing page. Um, you know, you want to demonstrate your expertise and take them to your service page to even demonstrate case studies, that all stuff that you've worked on. And it isn't all about just going straight for the kill and saying, get in touch, get in touch. Um, you know, you want to kind of let them travel around through the website a little bit. And that's the key thing that really helped us decrease the bounce rate. People weren't just getting a feel for us and moving on. They were moving to different pages. Now, one of the questions that was asked uh, to me when I posted about this on LinkedIn a little while ago was, well, how do you know people weren't going straight to the home page? Now, looking at our Google Analytics, we were actually able to see, yes, there were a very small percentage of people going to the home page, but the vast majority actually went from, you know, went, looked at case studies or looked at my strategy uh, link or the discovery link. So it really worked in the way that we wanted it to. Um, talk about what you believe in, in relation to your expertise. So values are absolutely, you know, getting your business values across are absolutely paramount. But obviously, you know, we all have our own values as well as individuals in, in terms of your personal brand. So if you're talking about, you know, your own values, that is the thing that your audience are going to connect with. Make eye contact in your pictures. So any of the pictures that you saw there were of me looking directly at the at the camera. Um, eyes are, are a strong biomotive trigger. Um, I went to a, a seminar pre-lockdown um, um, put on by a chap called Simon Priest. Um, he's a bit of a, a branding guru um, and he uh, used to run an agency. I think he's, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if he's still involved with it. It was called Elmwood. Um, and he specialized in a lot of um, uh, product uh, branding and Andrex Toilet Roll is one of the brands that he worked on and what they found was um, with the Andrex puppy dog on the on the packaging uh, they made uh, the, the puppy dog the, 
the compared the sales versus the puppy dog looking away and the puppy looking directly at the camera. And they saw a, a quite a significant increase in sales off the back of the packaging, the puppy looking straight into the camera. So they call it a biomotive trigger. So in terms of uh, your own imagery, it's always good um, just in general um, to, you know, to be looking straight at the camera, <coughs> something that allows that closer connection with your audience. Add a testimonial that talks specifically about you. Um, so, you know, again, obviously, you know, there are examples of testimonials on our website where they're talking about expand, but on that, on the LinkedIn landing page, they were talking specifically about Jag helped us do this. And again, it just helps build your personal brand and create that closer connection with your audience. Um, to go one step further, you could add a work with me call to action. So in there, you could have a, you know, a form in there um, and say, you know, so people can fill that in and it communicate, it, it links it emails directly to you. Um, so that's another way that you can make use of that. And then imagine that link, you could also use that in your email signature. So it isn't just, you know, I call it a LinkedIn landing page, but you can use it in numerous other places that warms people into your website and just gets them more into it rather than that overview from your homepage. So <clears throat> to, to kind of recap it, so going back to the sales funnel, hopefully that's demonstrated awareness and consideration. That's what it's all about. It's a starting point of what people are going to get involved in. If you're putting something like this in place, that's what's going to start the journey and getting them to engage with you and then ultimately make the purchase with you. So <clears throat> just to recap, with this hack, uh, we achieved a 54% decrease in bounce rate, a 210% increase in pages viewed per session, and a 1,142% increase in average session time. Um, so very simple thing to be able to do. And it's something that, well, like I say, you know, we've been putting in place for clients. we are showing you ours in particular, uh, because obviously, you know, client confidentiality, all that kind of thing. And we're happy to share these results for ourselves. I just want to finish off with a few statistics and one more slide after this, uh, just to back it up. So 38% of people will stop engaging with the website if the content and layout are unattractive. Users spend an average of 5.59 seconds looking at a website's written content, not just the imagery, not everything else, just the written content. And if given 15 minutes to consume content, two thirds of people would rather read something beautifully designed than something plain. So, I mean, this is kind of the broader picture. This is just talking about, obviously you might have all the information you want there, but really it's a big part of it is about the layout and the design. So just make sure you've got it nicely laid out and that's what's gonna engage people more and help increase that average session time on your, on your website and entice them to click through to other, other, um, other pages. So to finish off, what is the anatomy of a LinkedIn landing page? So you wanna outline um, each team member's core values in relation to their expertise. So if you think, if you remember on mine, it was me talking about what I believe in in relation to, um, in, in relation to marketing strategy. Provide a link to the service pages on your website associated with each team member's skill set. Like I say, mine in this case is strategy and discovery. And Danny, who also has a LinkedIn landing page, she's our digital marketer. Um, hers is um, also strategy and social media. Provide links to projects the team member has worked on now. I know that may not always be 100% relevant. It depends on how your business is set up. But the idea is, is that you're giving some hard evidence of what this person is capable of or has been involved in. Uh, provide a client testimonial written specifically about that team member. That's really powerful stuff. You know, that's the kind of thing that you really want to be getting out there because that's, you know, social proof. It, it kind of, it speaks for itself, really. Um, and then provide links to blog content written by that team member. Like I say, all of this that we've just highlighted is almost like it, it mirrors a lot of information that is actually in, you know, you don't get blogs on LinkedIn, you get the articles. Uh, you get recommendations instead of testimonials on your own LinkedIn profile. Um, you know, links to projects, you have a project section. It's basically just a warm in uh, from LinkedIn into your website. So that folks is um, how you create a closer connection with between your LinkedIn audience and your website. Thank you, Jay. That's really, really interesting. There's some, I think some fantastic points that have given me quite a number of things to think about there. Um, one question I had, there's a question from Andy, which I'll kind of, which is a very general question, which I'll, I'll I'm going to ask in a minute. But mm. one one thing I've used previously, well, I do use actually, and this is for Instagram more than LinkedIn, but there's no reason why this can't work on, on LinkedIn is a link tree. You maybe right. it's kind of a it's kind of a preset up where you can 
So you have your own page with a number of links to things. So it can have me have a little bio and then it might say my podcasts, events, Northern Affinity events, um, a lot, a lot of a very similar type of idea to you. I guess the difference is it's it's on an external website. It's not on your website. So they're, they're going off somewhere else before potentially going to your website. Yeah. I guess the point was that could this potentially be a quite a quick and easy way of doing something similar to what you do, what we talked about there before maybe developing a kind of a more of an all singing, all dancing within your website? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that link trail, have a look at that. It's not one I've heard of. There's, there's millions of, of them out there. And, you know, for every social media platform, their goal is to keep you on the platform. They don't want you to go away from it. So obviously that's where all these really nice little plugins and apps are coming in that, that kind of support that. But I suppose somewhere down the line, people will ultimately, once you're getting further down the, the, the funnel, they're going to want to check you out and check out your credibility. Now, the interesting thing is in the future, you know, there's, there's a bit of debate and we've had this internally in the office for a little while. You know, we've got the model Solar 7 and the website is at the centre, but the way things are going, you know, with social media, it's, it's almost like, you know, if you think about Facebook and Instagram, you've got the shopping functionality. Um, you know, they're trying to take away as much kit. You, there's a lot of stuff you can do without going anywhere near a website. And off the back of that, it brings into question, you know, what is uh, going to be the purpose of, of websites in the future? I don't think they'll ever disappear entirely, but the actual use case, social media are dictating a lot of the action in that case. Um, but even then, with the example you just gave, Mike, I think it's good to uh, still have a, a scenario uh, like where you've got I mean, in this case, we're calling it a LinkedIn landing page. You could call it an Instagram landing page. Um, it's something that then, you know, just creates that kind of uh, that personal connection. I think the, the link tree and the Instagram connections come from, as, as you're probably aware, you can't really, um, you can't um, put links in, in posts within Instagram, the, the none of that functionality. So I think that's where that's kind of born out of, really. Um, yeah. but it's really really interesting so actually I'll, I'll go to, i'll go back to andy's question they asked at the start which um is very relevant to the point you've just made uh, there so he uh, so he had an interesting discussion last week with a with a 25 year old who has buying responsibilities at a major company um playing devil's advocate and his argument was that websites are coming a little bit whole, old hat and his first ports of call when seeking a new supplier were linkedin and instagram and other social media platforms and he said he's not sure he's agree, but does his argument hold water? I guess it kind of touches on what you're saying there, really. Yeah, and you know, I mean, you know, it's it's indicative of the speed, the rate at which digital and it is changing. You know, we we're so tapped in now into the way that um, kind of. Um, uh, buyer habits and user habits we've got all this data whereas before anything digital it was just kind of a little bit of kind of finger in the air and guessing what's happening so yeah I think you know I mean obviously we know we haven't got a crystal ball we don't know what's happening in the future but it's indicative and it's interesting that you say a 25 year old because you know the millennial generation is just getting into the kind of the age of kind of senior management now and you know they've all grown up with with digital as a thing uh, whereas you know the generations before haven't so uh, yeah I mean right now uh, you know if you think of kind of where senior management are and decision makers uh, that you know they're probably I don't know probably say, say from 35 upwards on a, on a guess age wise so this is a concept you know we've in terms of our audience is definitely definitely kind of goes above the 35 year old uh, year age group and um, it's definitely something that works but absolutely you know this is something that you know maybe in a few years time I can see it evolving and absolutely changing so I think there probably is a bit of validity in there I know a lot of people of that age group that would just kind of look at the credibility around social media and then just make the inquiry straight off the back of that. Oh, absolutely you know I, I guess it's like anything we've experienced in his life it's moving away from Argos having a catalog in physical to a digital version of the website and it's just things evolve don't and things move and yeah. when you're in the moment they always feel like they're happening quickly but they do they do tend to happen quite quickly so I, i'm sure it'll be an ever-evolving piece of that um mm -hmm. so yeah another couple of questions so um joelle has mentioned there about linktree there's that potentially could give customer analysis paralysis um you can put two, you can put a lot of links on there um yeah. which could obviously could affect bounce rates so that's a really really good point on that i think it's like anything's how well you use it it's a, it's a platform yeah. that can be used well if, if you do it um yeah. and then lydia's asked a question about so for a very large sales team would you re recommend to try what, what you've what you've talked about with just maybe the key or senior sales people first <laughs> you see this um for outside the sales team 
Well, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, I mean, this leads on to a whole new, web, a whole different webinar. Uh, you know, if, if, uh, employee advocacy and employee engagement. I mean, that's a huge thing now. You know, it's all about the people, especially over the last twelve months. You know, we've we've kind of developed so much more empathy and just become, you know, closer. Even though we've been further apart, we've become a lot closer on on, on social media, and we're just kind of looking for that kind of empathy. Um, in a perfect world, I would say everyone should have one, but obviously that's got dependency on, you know, in a perfect world, a large organization, if everyone is an advocate, every employee is an advocate, is in fully engaged and they've got their whole LinkedIn set up really well and they're talking about the company and talking about their own things as well. And somebody thinks, all oh, right, this seems like a good person. Let me have a learn a little bit more about them and it connects through, then absolutely. But as you mentioned, Lydia, you know, for a large sales team, um, yeah, you know, obviously, I suppose in the first instance, you'd want to roll it out, start with, but it is, it, it's good for the, the primary kind of focus, I suppose, when I was thinking about it and when we created it, it was very much for the business development side of things. But your employees are your biggest ambassadors of your brand. So if everyone can have that, I mean, that comes into uh, the culture of the organization, if everyone buys into that, because everyone's LinkedIn is their own personal space, it doesn't belong to the company. But in a perfect world, if everyone is bought into that as a part of the culture, um, and they're happy to have their own LinkedIn landing page and have that on there and they're regularly on their LinkedIn uh, link um, and are regularly talking about the company then yeah it just kind of builds up to that overall uh, buy-in and I think you know it's kind of that classic uh, you know purpose over profit if people are seen to be genuinely bought into an organization you're much you're going to feel more comfortable buying from them rather than you know this very traditional business profit oriented uh, organization yeah, and I think it's probably the, the point I take from that is it, when you talk about bigger organisations, if you know if someone, let's say yourself, Lydia, and they they know they followed you on LinkedIn, they liked your post, they've connected with you, they feel an, uh, an affinity to you, then they click on the link on your LinkedIn profile to a website, and it's a big, very typical, should we say, corporate website. Mm. Likelihood is you're not there, you're not going to be seen on there. It's probably a little bit different for smaller businesses where maybe there is that bit more of a connection, but. I guess that's where you talk about things like the bounce rates, Jag is, well, I can't, I, I'm interested in Lydia, not yeah. company X and yeah. I'm not seeing anything. So I'm off type of type of. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I can think of examples where that's happened, where someone's connected with me on LinkedIn and I thought, okay, let me learn a bit more about them. It takes me to a homepage that has no mention of them. doesn't really connect with what they do. And it just, yeah, I'm, I'm bouncing straight, straight away from it. Yeah, so I think it's a really, really great point, Lydia, actually, because, you know, the difference, like, for, for smaller, you know, if it's myself on the Northern Affinity, there's going to, you could probably find out about me relatively easy through the website, mm -hmm. but a, a larger business, that's that's going to be a different um, different story. So I, I think it's a really interesting point and a, and a good question. And that's maybe where things like the link tree might, might be able to help in you, you know, pointing mm -hmm. people to a blog that you've written or yeah. um, a podcast you've appeared on or, or something like that. That might be a good alternative if it's not um, possible um, yeah 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 absolutely yeah no that's, that's, um that's some really good questions there um guys so i re really appreciate that thank you um and obviously you know if, if you're anything like me a question will pop up for jagging about an hour's time once we finish this so uh, um obviously yeah, i mean is, if people want to contact you jaguar kind of what's the best things to to get in touch um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, um, so it's Jag Panasar, uh, or if you want to send me an email, uh, it's jag at expandmarketing.co.uk, and that's spelled without the E, so it just starts with the letter X. Um, so yeah, you know, fire over any questions you've got, I'm always happy to have a chat. Brilliant, Jack. So I, 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 on my behalf, and obviously I'm sure the people who watch it, thank you very much. I think it's been really, really interesting and really useful. Um, like, like I mentioned right at the start, that this video I'll be downloading it. Um, and we'll we'll end it'll go on the Northern Affinity website. It'll go on our YouTube channel as well as as long as with uh, with a number of our other how to webinars. So you know, do check that out if you want to go and watch it. Um, and jo Joel just said that she's a she said thank you and she's just off to create her new landing page. Um, Absolutely, that's good. Um, and eleven out of ten from from Andy. Hey. Um, Never had that before. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe maybe put an extra one in there by accident. <laughs> Uh, but no, thank you, Jag, and thank you everyone for watching. I uh, really appreciate it. Have a good day, guys. Thanks, guys.